Yo, what is up everyone? I am Godin Gaming, and today we're going to be continuing our weekly deliberate practice guide where the intention is to learn one new technique or idea and layer that onto what we've done in the previous weeks. Last time we focused on why and how we should think about our abilities, and this week we're going to be talking about this. Play with your team. It should come as no surprise that it's helpful to play with your team in a team-based game mode. I mean, duh. But you might not exactly know how or why you want to do that. So let's start with that, the why, since it's kind of obvious. And this is the why. Playing with your team is an advantage. We talk a lot about advantages in here for good reason. Breaking down the game into simple advantages or simple disadvantages will help you decode or decipher the game into simple ideas and then allow you to make smarter and better decisions. Like this. Grabbing heavy when no one is around? Well, heavy is an advantage, so therefore a good idea. Challenging someone who is using heavy when you're alone? Well, that's a disadvantage for you, so bad idea. This obviously can apply to playing with your team as well. Just watch. Helping your teammate fight a single target? Well, 2v1 is an advantage, therefore a good idea. Challenging two enemies on your own? Well, 1v2 is a disadvantage, therefore probably a bad idea. And that's basically it. It's pretty easy, right? And again, these are not rules. They're just like general guidelines that will help you overall. But seriously, numbers advantage and playing with your team is an easy way to win gunfights and matches. So let's go over some of the reasons that team play is an advantage. Number one, it's easier to kill your enemy. If there are two of you fighting the same target, you're essentially doubling your firepower, which means you can likely kill them faster than you would have otherwise. Number two, you'll likely live longer. Like we mentioned, your time to kill is reduced when you have two people shooting the same target. This obviously means they'll die much quicker. A side benefit of that is that the enemy can't dish out as much damage as he would have otherwise because he's dead, meaning he'll likely not have enough time to kill either of you or do as much damage. This is also because playing 2v1 basically doubles your health pool. Not to mention, you can swap enemy focus by dipping into cover for a second, wait for the enemy to shoot at your ally, then dip back out to shoot at them. So playing with your team increases the odds of your survival and your team's survival. Number three, momentum. Since we're more likely to take less damage or die during 2v1s, this means we can get to the next engagement much quicker, and this will ultimately lead to your team having more momentum. This is especially true if you can catch people alone when they spawn in, which is much easier to do in a smaller game mode. Shooting the same targets will also yield more super energy with assists, which means more supers and therefore even more momentum. And supers are a huge advantage, therefore good idea. So in general, it's typically better to fight a 2v1, so why give those up? Why do your own thing and try to look for 1v1s when you could be looking for easy 2v1s? Don't give up your 2v1s, you're just giving up an advantage if you do. So those are some of the reasons why playing with your team is an advantage. Now let's talk about how we do that. Number one, lane with your team. Like we talked about in the lane next to cover video, which will be linked below, we want to be next to cover, close to our teammates, and ready to shoot the same targets. If you can't shoot the same enemy, it's not a 2v1. Sure, your ally could get into an engagement, and then later you come to the fight and you can clean up, but fighting a 2v1 is much harder than fighting two quick 1v1s. And like I mentioned in that video, this doesn't mean you want to be right on your teammate because you don't want to block their exit. You want to be using the front and back strategy where one of you is really close to the cover, the other person is behind and slightly off. So in general, try to make sure you're laning with your teammate and you can look in the same direction as they can. Number two, swapping fire. Another way of playing with your team is to swap fire. This means you peek a lane to shoot once or twice before going back into cover, and then your teammate does the same thing. They peek the lane, shoot once or twice, back into cover, and then when they get back into cover, you peek again, and so on and so forth. It's a good strategy for extending the amount of time you can stay in a lane, and it makes the enemy's job much harder. So try to swap fire when you're getting a little low or there are multiple enemies, and you'll find a lot of success. Number three, find and choose targets. Like we talked about before, you generally want to be looking at the same direction as your teammate, but sometimes a little butterfly or dragonfly might catch your eye. One thing you can do to make sure you're shooting at the same target is looking at the bullet trajectory where your bullets are going and where the enemy bullets are going. This gives you a lot of information on enemy location. If you're on comms with your teammate, you can ideally be telling each other where the enemy is and where to shoot. You can also use this to choose which targets you should both be facing. When there are multiple enemy pings on the radar, this is really crucial. So use bullet trajectory and comms to find and choose targets. Number four, support. 
In any given moment, you typically want to be playing the role of a support player or a leader. You're either making plays and your teammates support you, or your teammates are making plays and you support them. For a lot of beginners, you might not be confident in pushing and choosing targets, and therefore you might be a better support player for now. So your best option in that case is to find a teammate and do the tips we've been discussing. This effectively can turn their bad plays into good plays. And you can sometimes do this by simply supporting their decision. So sure, they might push into an area that's a little bit dicey, but if you let them go at it alone, they'll likely die and leave you with no help later. So it's a lose-lose. Or you could help them and all of a sudden their seemingly bad push doesn't look so bad anymore. Now obviously this doesn't always work, but it's definitely something to think about. Ideally, you want to be helping and supporting your team, not leaving them to die. Though you can occasionally use them as bait by letting them go in first and cleaning up the enemies who are shooting at them and not you. Maybe just don't explicitly tell them in the moment that you're doing that. So support your allies' decisions as often as you can, but if you're not confident with your allies, you'll have to take the lead sometimes. That brings us to our fifth point, leading. If your teammate doesn't make pushes or decisions, then you need to take the initiative and make some for yourself. Then you have to gauge whether your teammates are helping you or not. Did they follow your lead? If he does, awesome. You can make more plays knowing you'll have support. If not, then you have to adjust your plays considering you're likely not gonna get much help. Try to support as much as you can and lead if your teammates are following up with you. Number six, wait for your team. Sometimes playing with your team means waiting for them. This is not ideal, but it's generally better than spawning up, pushing forward instead of waiting for your team, and then dying to three enemies because you got impatient and thought you were John Wick at the 29 minute mark. You're welcome, by the way. So usually, it's just better to wait and go find your team. Because you don't want to be wasting what could have been a potential 2v1 or a 2v2 and instead just die. I see this a lot in small team modes. If you spawn up alone, you need to get to your team as fast as possible. Because they're likely playing against the numbers, so they probably need you just as much as you need them. Number seven, peeling back. We all get into hot water sometimes. You channel your inner titan, but then you realize you're not a titan and you're in a position that is like way too far forward. Happens to everyone. In this situation, your best friend are your friends. They can hopefully realize that you're in a bad spot and then they provide cover for you while you get out of there or help team shoot. This is even more important for you when the roles are reversed. If you see an ally too far ahead, try to give him some cover so that he can get out of there or you can help him kill the person he's trying to shoot. Number eight, finding an opening. When the match starts, especially in small game modes like elimination and comp, you are looking to get an easy kill in the beginning. This can often come down to posting up and seeing who gets the first sniper pick. But you can also try to out-rotate the enemy team. This means quickly moving around the map in a group until you find an enemy that's alone or even better, looking at a different direction because he was scoped in too long and didn't expect you to be there. So try to make your openings by finding a 2v1. So those are a few ways we can play with our team. Now, that's quite a lot to think about. And like I've been preaching, you kind of only want to focus on one or two things at a time. So what I would like you to do is maybe just start with the one laning with your team. Do that for a round or two and see how it was. Were you laning with your team most of the time? And even ask yourself after you die or after you get a few kills, you know, were you laning with your team? And then moving on to the second one, swapping fire and so on and so forth. Because remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. The longer and more focused you are on these individual concepts, the firmer your grasp will be on these concepts. The more deliberate you are with your practice, the better the result. And it will make your next practice sessions that much better as well. Because every time you have deliberate practice, you're not just practicing that one skill, you're practicing how to practice. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. I hope some of you found that valuable, and I look forward to hearing about your progress during the week. And as always, happy practicing.